just to ask the uh, Minister if she can give the House an update on the status of the Article 50 negotiations which are ongoing, uh, what progress has been made and in what areas and what challenges uh, still uh, present in terms of issues that relate to Ireland. Um, thank you. Well, obviously we had um, quite an in-depth discussion around this earlier on this morning and we had a personal view as well from Mr Verhofstadt. But just to go through um, where we are at the moment, there have been three rounds of negotiations to date, with the most recent round concluding on August 31st. As this is the first phase of negotiations and in line with the agreed sequencing, the focus has been on the withdrawal issues of citizens' rights, the financial settlement, or more technical separation issues and the issues unique to Ireland. Both the EU and the UK have used these early round of negotiations to clarify the respective positions, highlighting the areas of agreement and divergence. Discussions on several issues have been reasonably constructive to date, with some progress being made in the area of citizens' rights and the other separation issues. However, it is very clear that difficult and complex issues remain above in regard to the financial settlement. It is in the area in which the least amount of progress has been made. Although the UK has accepted that it will have financial obligations to honour on its departure, it has not yet advanced a more concrete position on the issue and indeed has argued that its obligations are moral, not legal. It is imperative that sufficient progress is made on these issues, as well as one and all of other withdrawal issues in order for the European Council to be able to make a decision regarding the opening of parallel discussions on the framework for future relations. It will be in the second phase that trade and sectoral issues, including the question of transitional arrangements, will be discussed. And given that these issues are, of course, of crucial importance to Ireland and our economy, the Government wants to see phase two begin as quickly as possible. However, unless the UK demonstrates greater and more constructive engagement on these issues in the next two rounds of negotiations, it is unlikely that the European Council on the 19th and 20th of October will be in a decision to decide on whether sufficient progress has been achieved in the first phase of negotiations. Obviously, you know tomorrow Prime Minister Theresa May will give a speech, and while we can speculate what's in that until um, we actually hear the speech, we won't be able to see what implications that will have on negotiations to begin later on next week. The problem is that we have a focus on Ireland at the moment uh, because it is one of the three areas that is part of the current negotiations, which is the financial settlement, citizens' rights and Ireland. And you've rightly recognised there has been positive movement on citizens' rights. Uh, there may be an announcement tomorrow uh, by Theresa May in respect of the financial settlement or the divorce obligations, as they are called uh, by the European Union. And if that happens, it is possible that Ireland then will fall down the pecking order in terms of priorities because I think the whole discussion will move towards trade and the broader issues of trade between uh, Europe and uh, the United Kingdom and that will present challenges. So we need to get as many concessions as we possibly can now in respect of Ireland. Um, I welcomed uh, the Commission's paper in respect of uh, Ireland where it talks about protecting the Good Friday Agreement, it talks about the unique circumstances for Ireland. We had Mr Verhofstadt today who said that the North should stay in the Customs Union, but that is not the position of the British Government. And I suppose what we need to hear from the Irish Government is that they fully support that, that it is a red line issue, whatever about the European Commission and others, that it is an absolute red line issue that the Irish Government will make sure that they will not sign up and in fact will use their veto if necessary to ensure that the North does not come out of the European Union's in, Union in terms of the Customs Union and also that we get full protections for the Good Friday oh Agreement. Um, thank you, Deputy. Well, I suppose to reiterate what you've just um, stated and that we do enjoy um, a high level of support from the task force, from Michel Barnier and very clearly um, from Mr Verhofstadt today, we're very appreciative of the level of support that both the task force and our partners have shown for Ireland's unique concerns. Again, Mr Barnier reiterating this after his meeting with Minister Coveney as recently as the 4th of September, that Ireland's interests are the EU interests. And Ireland has very clearly stated and um, the Irish Government has very clearly stated that any return to a hard border, to a physical border um, for the island of Ireland would be absolutely detrimental. Minister Coveney and the officials from the Department of Foreign Affairs have been working very closely with Mr Barnier and, in, with the, and his team to ensure that Ireland's position is fully reflected in the negotiations. And what's important to say is that as this process continues, um, irrespective of what is announced in Theresa May's statement tomorrow, we will continue to be fully engaged with the task force. Our officials are engaged on a daily basis with Michel Barnier and 
around his task force team. We are there to ensure that Ireland's priorities are front and centre to the negotiations. And I think it's been very clear um, with the first round of negotiations, with the publishment of a paper around dialogue between North and South of the island, um, that our, I suppose, our, our, our manner in which we are, are working is working, um, and we will continue to engage in that way. Final supplementary, Deputy Cullinan. Ken Corley. The problem is that while it is the position of the European Commission and obviously the European Parliament that the North should remain within the customs union, obviously this is going to be subject to ongoing negotiations with a British government. And I suppose what we are trying to work, it, work out is what will be the end game, what will actually be in the withdrawal agreement. And for us, it's an absolute red line that the North stays in the customs union because it, if it doesn't, then we are dealing with a border and a new frontier on the island of Ireland. And all talk of open borders and frictionless borders becomes a nonsense. So it has to be a red line issue for us. And I'm asking, is it a red line issue for the Irish government? And secondly, we have put forward a proposal that the only way to protect the Good Friday Agreement in its entirety is to incorporate it as a protocol into the withdrawal agreement. That means then that the Good Friday Agreement has full legal protection uh, it's, and the Good Friday Agreement would then stay within the European Union, which means that citizens in the North would have access to the European Court of Justice and the European Court of Human Rights. We can't cherry-pick the Good Friday Agreement, so it has to go in in its totality as a protocol attached to the uh, withdrawal agreement. Is that also a position of the Irish Government? And is this something that they will press Come with the Commission as well? Response, Minister. Um, just again to reiterate that this is a decision that has been made um, by the British people. It's a decision that we respect in saying that, as an Irish government, we would absolutely prefer if the UK remained within the European Union. We would absolutely prefer if the UK remained within the single market and the customs union. And again, I think by our conversation earlier in the chamber today, it's very clear that the most positive outcome would be for Ireland, um, for Northern Ireland and the UK to have the closest possible relationship to the one that we currently have now. And that would obviously include the UK remaining within the customs union and within the single markets. Um, we cannot make that decision for them. That is a decision that they have to come to themselves. However, um, they have again stated that they are committed to maintaining the Good Friday Agreement, to maintaining the peace process. And while we talk about um, imaginative solutions, this at this moment in time seems like the most practical solution to make sure that we maintain that peace that, as Mr Verhofstadt himself this morning said, is so fragile. Oh my God. Uh, we move on now to the next question.